Steve Baker, investigative journalist, joins us now. Hello, Steve. Hey, Glenn. How are you? <laughs> well, uh, I'd be better if your story wasn't popping up on my radar. Um, <laughs> you tell me, tell me how much of your uh, videotape that you you have it's it's pretty much all available right you're not hiding anything no i'm not hiding anything at all i mean other than the right. um unfortunate video that i took that day where i you know filmed my shoelaces uh, at certain points getting jostled around in the crowd but other than that it's, right. it's right. pretty much all out on the uh, internet right and when you when they originally called you a couple of years ago you said hey if you need the tape you want anything you can you can have it i'll turn it over to you right yeah that's exactly what happened i did a two-hour interview back in october of 21 and then they uh threatened me with prosecution in november of 21 and then after that initial threat we didn't hear from them again for 20 months and that happened on, on this past friday and what did what was it exactly that they were threatening you with? Prosecution for uh, what? Well, and this this is the absurdity of the original threat. My attorney received a email the week before Thanksgiving of twenty one from Assistant U.S. Attorney Anita Eve in Pennsylvania, saying that his client, meaning me, would be charged within the week. And then there were some additional back and forths in which we learned that they were going to charge me, first of all, with property damage, because at one point I stood on a bench inside the crypt area of the Capitol building. I didn't damage the bench, but I I was standing up to get above the crowd so that I could film what was going on. And then the, the most absurd charge of all was that they were actually going to charge me with, and you're not going to believe this, interstate racketeering. Uh, I'll let that sink in for a second. Yeah. Anyway, let me just say, interstate racketeering. Yes. I'm and trying they, to make that work. How, how did they make that work in their heads? Well, assumably, I must have known about an illegal event that was taking place in D.C. on January 6th. Therefore, I colluded oh, apparently with someone yeah. else, traveled across sure. state lines, and then profited uh, from the licensing of my videos to HBO, et cetera, et cetera. This is insane. This is insane. We all knew. I was on the air two days before or the day before saying, please don't go to Washington. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know the infiltration. You don't know who's good, who's bad. Please don't go to Washington. Um, because I felt that there was, well, this kind of danger, um, especially from the federal government. Uh, and, and now, what, because you went, you had foreknowledge? Please, Everybody, the, all of the press was there on January 6th. They were all there. Oh, yeah, there was at least 100 uh, reporters and, and journalists of all types, uh, independent and otherwise, including uh, some, uh, at least one from the blaze at the time was there inside the building. And yep. then, of course, <laughs> the the absurdity of that is, is that somehow little old me from Raleigh, North Carolina, I had knowledge of a huge illegal event about well, that place. But somehow the intelligence from the FBI, the Capitol Police, and at all, they, they didn't know about it. Yeah, except they did know about it. And, uh, you know, w- of course, we communicate in the conservative circles through invisible smoke signals at night. So, of course, <laughs> you knew about it, too. Um, now, you are only one of five journalists that have been given access to the 4,100 hours of January 6th video. You've been meeting with Congress members and congressional investigators uh, about the charges uh, or the discoveries that you have found. You were going to do, I assume you still are, going to be releasing a story on The Blaze all about this. I don't want to get ahead of the reporting here, but do I have that understanding right first? You've got all of that correct. Okay. And uh, for some reason, as we're getting close to publish this story, for some reason, they come out of the blue to one of the five journalists who have, who have had access to all of this, and now they're going to press charges. Yeah, and let me give you kind of an exclusive advanced bombshell on this case, my case in particular. I mentioned earlier that this 
original uh, effort back in 2021, over 20 months ago, was presented to my attorney from assistant U.S. attorney Anita Eve out of Pennsylvania. She also happens to be the exact same U.S. attorney who ordered the SWAT raid on the Pennsylvania abortion clinic protester after his attorneys wow. had cooperated for so many months with them. And then she would not return their emails, return their calls. And then just one day on September 23rd of last year or the year before 2019, maybe whatever it was, they uh, suddenly showed up at his door with the red dots on his chest. So how do you feel? I mean, it's the same person. It's the same DOJ, uh, the same kind of scenario. Uh, have, I mean, are you married? Do you have kids? Have you talked about, you know, somebody coming to the front door and trying to pound it down with a SWAT team? Yeah, I, I am uh, I'm not married, but I have two grown children, and they are well aware of my activities and what I'm doing. I've, uh, I've forewarned them that this day was potentially coming, and uh, they're proud of me. They're proud of the work that I do, and uh, they're, they're fully supportive of me. So I'm not worried about them and their reactions, but, uh, you know, I, I do have a dog with a, uh, a loud mouth, so obviously I'm concerned that if the red dots come through my bedroom, bedroom window at six o'clock in the morning that, uh, you know, we've seen how they treat dogs that uh, bark at them. So what does your attorney say? Uh, I, I have a couple of attorneys. I have my local Raleigh attorney and then I uh, engaged a, uh, an attorney who practices in DC back when the original uh, threats, uh, prosecution were taking place. And they have, uh, have told me that this is obviously a, first of all, it's an intimidation, um, effort by the DOJ. Of course it is. But second, but secondly, it appears that they're trying to entrap me in some sort of process crime because they didn't subpoena me directly. They subpoenaed my videos. And so whatever it is that they're looking for is what I think is, is that they're going to try and build a case of some sort of obstruction of justice, something like that. If they find missing elements or things don't line up with all of my stories for the last two and a half years, that sort of thing. But the um, the reality, the reality, uh, Glenn, is that simply uh, moving forward with this myself, I have no intention of stopping. I mean, I was I was warned in the subpoena itself by uh, AUSA Anita Eve. I mean, I, I just want to read you one sentence from the subpoena cover letter. She said, although you are not required to do so. You are requested yeah. not to disclose the existence of this subpoena. Any such disclosure mm -hmm. could impede the investigation being conducted and thereby interfere with the enforcement of law. And that's what they're trying to do. So, they're trying to entrap me in a process crime. Uh huh. And they will keep your mouth shut. And if you don't, if you do what you're doing right now, they're going to charge you with obstruction of justice because yeah. you were impeding the... The law enforcement just doing what it was trying to do. Jeez. That's exactly what it is. And, and, the, and the worst aspect of all of these January 6 um, uh, cases, and this is the thing that I've been warning America about through my own uh, podcast and, and uh, blog and et cetera, et cetera, is I've been saying all along that the most dangerous aspect of nearly all of these uh, J6 cases is the Department of Justice focus on speech and the – Oh, yeah. Um, the limiting of speech. And it doesn't matter whether you're a parading grandma through the Capitol or it was the scary words of an Oath Keeper leader, which, by the way, had nothing to do with January 6th. It's those words that are being used to establish these incredibly ominous precedents in hundreds and hundreds of federal court cases um, against political expression by those who deign to think, act, speak against the approved narrative. Well, you're not alone. Um, uh, soon I will be um, sharing some things uh, that uh, uh, I've seen a letter very similar to that. In fact, had that exact <laughs> paragraph in it. Uh, okay. And uh, my family is being targeted and uh, uh, it will not stand. It will not stand. And... Um, uh, when we are ready to expose, we will. Um, 
uh, same with you. Thank God you are uh, brave enough to do this. A man who will not go gently into the good night, a man who is being threatened now with prosecution because of his uh, January 6th uh, videos, which were nonviolent uh, and been used for HBO, New York Times, the Epic Times. Um, he is one of five journalists that have been given access to the 41,000 hours of uh, Capitol footage for January 6th. Uh, there's all kinds of things in there, and he was doing a story with The Blaze, and uh, lo and behold, as he's getting ready to release this, he's subpoenaed. His tapes are subpoenaed, and he is threatened with prosecution. Steve, can you give us a, a little... Uh, a hint of what you've found and also can you tell us do you think that this is because of your ongoing work in looking being one of the five that have seen all of these uh, uh, videotapes or is it just a coincidence well, it would be easy to uh, get conspiratorial about it because the timing is uh, absurd and it's it's obviously suspicious. But in terms of what I've found, and I, and, I, and I do believe that they are aware of what I'm looking at because I have been working directly not only with actual congressional investigators. I've been working with uh, the Oversight Project uh, investigators from the Heritage Foundation after the discoveries that I've made. Uh, I felt like that it was important that I not keep this to myself as being the sole uh, person uh, uh, with this information. So I, I've read about 10 people in, including uh, obviously uh, the blaze into this, uh, this particular story. But it, it all began for me when I began to watch the courtroom proceedings themselves. I, I was actually there every single day of the first Oath Keepers trial for nine weeks. And I was in, in the media room wow. at, the, at the courthouse uh, covering that event. And then what I learned was, uh, and this was, you know, I, I wouldn't say it was shocking to me, but it was, it was uh, definitely stark. And that was that I was seeing the Department of Justice and the FBI colluding in creating evidence that didn't exist out of whole cloth and then also of course suppressing exculpatory evidence that should have been allowed into those mm -hmm. trials and so after viewing that there was a uh, there was a particular moment which i won't give away right here because it, it would reveal what the story is itself that i had this uh, this eureka moment and i went oh my god this is a conspiracy under the part of the department of justice to convict these men and I think I can find it. Well, it took many months before I was finally granted access to that 41,000 hours worth of tape. So I knew what I was looking for when I got there. And I had about six or seven other stories that I wanted to review during the three days of access that I had. But as I began working on this one particular story, it became a day, then two days. And then I ended up spending all three days on it because it became bigger and bigger and bigger. So while I won't reveal what that story is right now, because we'll do that later when the time is right. But the point is, is that I have, I'm, I'm just telling you, I'm telling the country right now, I have found the kill shot of actual Department of Justice, FBI collusion in suppressing evidence and also in creating evidence that does not exist. Can you, when, when are you expected to release this? Has this uh, delayed things? Uh, no, uh, the only delay that we're facing right now is that the um, uh, McCarthy team there at the, uh, uh, the the House offices where these these videos are archived and presented, they've hit, they've hit the pause button on access. I need about two more days in there to tighten it up, button it up, you know, make sure that there's no loose ends. And then uh, I have been told that I will have a first. Uh, shot back into the video room once they uh, issue a press release on their new media guidelines, policies, and procedures because the mainstream media coalition, the New York Times, Politico, et cetera, et cetera, yes. uh, sued, sued the uh, government for access uh, because of the exclusive stories that Tucker was given access to at the time. So Correct. in response to that, they've had to create this new uh, policy where they're going to grant everyone access and that I have been promised by those congressional staffers that I'm going to be first in. That was supposed to be today, but that policy still has not been released yet. Andrew, I'm anxious to see what you have. Uh, keep digging. Continue to stand. We will pray for you and your family. 
Uh, keep us up to speed on what's happening to you personally, and we will look for your story with The Blaze hopefully very soon. 